Hi, I'm Ginger Garner. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be focusing on the NAP meditation. So what is that? NAP, N-A-P, is an acronym. And the three letters actually stand for three really important parts uh, to the stress response and to building um, good musculoskeletal strength and endurance um, and mobility. I'm holding the skull here because the nap meditation and the thrust of it focuses on this area, right below the oral cavity. Below the oral cavity is a floating bone called the hyoid. It actually is a connecting point. It's a touchstone that tells me a lot about what's going on um, if I see someone as a patient or if I'm seeing them maybe in a group setting um, in a class or um, something like that. It actually is a connecting point between the external and the internal and has a direct kind of feed forward mechanism into the vocal cords. So just by literally listening to someone's voice, I can tell a lot about any dysfunction that would be happening um, in the body. So we focus on, again, the hyoid just below, everything that happens just below the oral cavity. And we also fun to, um, focus on what's happening in the oral cavity inside the mouth as well. I want you to use, uh, hold up your right hand or your left hand if you prefer with your thumb and your index finger like this. The index finger is going to curl around. You're going to use the edge of your finger here, okay, the edge of your index finger to hold up towards the hyoid area, not compressing too much because you'll notice my voice has not changed. My voice has not changed. The N letter of the NAP stands for neutral larynx. Neutral larynx. What does that mean? Well, if you're someone who needs your voice, if you teach, if you speak, if you sing, and most of us need our voice, if that hyoid and the laryngeal area is held too rigidly, we will have vocal problems, um, no matter where they derive from. Also, if we hold, have stress and we hold stress, and usually we hold stress in this area, that can create those vocal issues. So we need to have a neutral larynx to improve our stress response, but also make sure that we have a great, pleasant speaking voice. You'll find out next that this area connects through the fascia and nerves to the respiratory diaphragm and the pelvic diaphragm. So as a pelvic PT, I can tell a lot about what's happening down here by looking up here. So with this grip, I want you to very gently glide. Do you see how little I'm actually pressing? Side to side, side to side. Notice that it does not change the quality of my voice. Okay. If it does, then that's something that needs to be investigated a little further. Then just notice that I just swallowed just then. I want you to do that too. Go ahead and swallow. Your swallow should be silent. When you're doing this very gentle, pain-free mobilization, it should not change the quality of your voice. If so, that's something that I would look at as a therapist, whether it's through the fascia um, or the soft tissue or the, the uh, bony landmarks in that area. That's first, that's your neutral larynx. Silent swallow, pain-free mobilization, doesn't change the quality of your voice. Part two is the A, apposition. What that means is between the levels of your spine, between T8 and L2, so somewhere in this area, all the way down to this area, that covers the span of the diaphragm. It's a huge muscle. So T8 to L2. Now, why does that matter? Have you ever seen someone who has a hard time breathing? Someone with COPD, for example, chronic obstructive pulmonary uh, disorder. Their diaphragm actually flattens. When it flattens, and they inhale, there's nowhere for the breath to go. And so it becomes very hard for them to get rid of kind of stale air in the lungs. It's hard for them to breathe. We want optimal apposition. We want a nice, tall, domed diaphragm. The way we're going to do that is find your rib cage, stay away from the central area. That's the xiphoid. You do not want to touch that area, basically. I want you to come down to the side lateral part of the rib cage. Also stay away from your floating ribs down here. You only want to mobilize the area at this angle. 
If the abdominal area is too rigid or painful, you might wanna lean forward and slouch just a little bit. And that allows me to get up under the rib cage where my fingers are pressing out towards you. They are not pressing into the abdominal organs, okay? We're not mobilizing the liver here, okay? <laughs> or the gallbladder. So press forward towards, right? I'm pressing forward towards you and your, rib, your fingers are coming forward towards me. Now I'm gonna sit up a little bit so you can see on the inhale, I'm gonna inhale now. I'm gonna manually bring the rib cage out to the side. And on the exhale, the fingers made deep and a little. That may be really hard in the beginning. Let's do a few more. Inhale, expand. Exhale, deepen. You might find some tender points there. You do not wanna cause pain. You just wanna hang out with that sensation. Breathe in a way that does not create tension in a rigid larynx up top. One more time, inhale. Laterally, pulling the ribcage out to the sides. Exhale, then you sink a bit. Now you can do this for up to two to five minutes. And when you release, the ribcage should be more mobile, more free, the breath should be more open and deeper, and there should be no tension up here. The last piece, we'll put it all together. It's the P is pitching, and that comes from the base up. You resonate through all the open cavities of the body, and that is what gives you sound. That's what helps you to create sound. All right, so if we put it all together, we're not going to make a sound to begin with. We're gonna do something called ujjayi. This is called subphonation. We're just going to simply Exhale and make a ah sound. Watch what happens to my waist. When I do that, the waist gets smaller. I'm not straining in this area. I'm gonna inhale silently and exhale. That is below the threshold of sound. Now, Let's take that pitch that was below the threshold, bring it up above the threshold and actually create sound. And that will be the P part of the nap, pitching. We're gonna use Brahmari for that. Brahmari is a B breath, it's a buzzing breath. You can use it as a sighing breath. Um, when you're doing vocal preservation work, if you glide down like that with your voice, you're actually being really kind to the vocal folds. So I want you to do that with me. We're gonna start on an exhale. Take an inhale that's silent, an inhale that allows us to be just very gently mobilized. And then on the exhale, we're gonna buzz it down. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy, I want you to do two more with me. Inhale silently, no tension, belly breath. And go again. Last one, inhale, silent, no tension here, belly breath. And last one. So what does that do? Well, number one, did you notice it elongated your exhale without even trying? It might make the eyes feel a little bit brighter. You might be able to focus better. Your stress level is definitely gonna be lower your blood pressure, your respiratory rate, your heart rate are all lower. You should be able to nap in any situation. And that's how you know you're taking a sustainable breath. You should be able to nap while you're driving, nap while you're eating, nap while you're doing all kinds of everyday activities, and it should feel natural. That means neutral larynx, good apposition, right? And pitching over the top of that. So if I was gonna combine that with a yoga pose, I might do something like, a downward dog prep, where I might lift the knees off the floor with a nice neutral spine, and I should be able to go, hmm. If I can't do that, then something's not right about the pose. I'm pushing too hard, I'm pushing too far. If I can do that with a nice smooth voice, then in all likelihood, I have lined up the pose from a musculoskeletal orthopedic perspective biomechanically 
I've lined it up right, and I'm doing that in a sustainable way. So thanks for joining me for the nap meditation. I hope this was helpful.